I am Tony Parker from the San Antonio Spurs. I'm Paul George of the Indiana Pacers. I'm Nick Young. I'm tuning in to Kicks on Court. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Kicks on Court Weekly Recap. I'm your host, George Kill, and on today's show, we get up close and personal with Masha's custom creations. Plus, Pacers star Paul George discusses his involvement in the newly created Nike ID Player Edition program. But first, let's check out the Kicks on Court happenings on the West Coast. The Black Mamba made his season debut in the prelude Nike Kobe 1. Fellow teammate Nick Young brought out the East Regional Air Jordan 20. Jordan Hamilton became the first player to wear the Gamma Blue Air Jordan 11 on court, while reigning Kicks on Court champion Derek Williams wore the Flint Gray Air Jordan 7. Eric Bledsoe returned to action in the Forging Iron LeBron 11. Anton Jameson went the Shades of Grey route with the Crazy 8 and Steph Curry nailed his first game winner in a new anatomic spawn PE. We also spotted Steve Blake, DeMarcus Cousins, and Gordon Hayward going the ID route with the Kobe 8, the LeBron 11, and KD6 respectively. Now at the beginning of the month, Nike launched its brand new ID Player Edition program in which players will debut customized shoes highlighted by special moments throughout the season. The 11 player roster includes a number of kicks on court regulars including Chris Paul, J.R. Smith, Ty Lawson, Jared Jack, and Paul George. We recently caught up with the latter to discuss his love for IDs and his involvement in the new program. Well, mine is, will be with the Kobe's. You know, our ID is with the Kobe's. Um, the main thing is that is, you know, you know, they know the players are creative with making colorways and stuff like that. So they want the fans to be able to make some colorways that you know, we can play with, play with, and we can wear. Um, you know, just to make a connection with, you know, with the fans of Nike, and, uh, uh, kind of grow with that, you know, Nike ID, uh, and, and get more fans to Nike ID. I'm big in the colors. You know, I don't like to be generic. I don't like one color. Um, you know, I'm a guy that likes the colors that you know pop out and, and, and really stand out. So that's that's really my inspiration when it when it comes to me ID and shoes and, and having colorways. PG also picked his favorite from his two go-to shoes the Kobe 8 and the Hyperdunk. You know, that's my initials and everything on them, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I'm always a fan of Kobe, um, you know, because I like the low-cut shoes, and, you know, I feel, you know, lighter on my feet, and those are more comfortable for me. Um, you know, so yeah, I, I, it's a love-hate with both shoes. Now, last week, we introduced our Viewpoint segment for the month of December, in which we asked you, the viewers, a hot topic question about a relevant subject matter in the Kicks on Court world or stemming from the show. As a follow-up to various members of the Cavs giving their takes on what a Kyrie Irving signature shoe would look like, we asked you guys the same question and got some very interesting responses in return. Johnny Kilroy stated that it would definitely be a high top with full-length lunar lawn, carbon fiber heel counter, and midfoot shank. It would also have dynamic fly wire, Kevlar laces, a Jordan 7 style tongue, and 3M everywhere. Basketball World said it would be a high top lightweight zoom shoe which would allow him to stay quick but give him stability in his shoes, as he clearly loves high tops since he's been wearing the Hyperdunks for ages. Kyle Tetzlaff simply stated it would have a 180 Air Max bag, Lunar Lawn insert with zoom, and a fly knit fuse upper. Tongues mentioned that Kyrie's shoes would be a highly responsive high top with three colors. The cushioning, I guess, would be zoom and also have Lunar Lawn. The material would be synthetic. And lastly, Yusuf Jones said if Kyrie had a signature, I think it would be a high top with unlocked zoom fly wire and engineered mesh. We also noticed many of you contemplating whether or not Nike should create Paul George's signature shoe, and we actually asked him to name two elements that would be a part of his shoe. But before we reveal his response next week, we want you guys to leave your own descriptions of what a Paul George shoe would look like and how it would differ from a Kyrie shoe in the comment section below. We highlighted the best kicks on the West Coast earlier, but let's now take a tour through the East Coast. Carmelo finally laced up the home version of his 1.5 PE. Dion Waiters proved to be steps ahead of everyone with his debut of the Prelude Kobe 6, and rookie Otto Porter returned from injury in the Steel Air Jordan 10. Ramon Sessions rocked the Reebok Q96 PE. Amir Johnson had a career high of 32 points in the playoff 11, while J.R. Smith and Glenn Davis wore new ID colorways of the KD6 and LeBron 10 Elite. Tony Roden had the surprise of the week in the East with his wear of a Mosh designed Air Jordan 4 Custom. Now last month we caught up with Mosh, the customizer of shoes for LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and many more to discuss the evolution of customs in professional sports. In part two of my conversation with Mosh in Central Park, 
we get up close and personal with a few of his kicks off court that he's created over the years. This is actually my Spider-Man Flight Posit 3. Um, basically, this is one of those things where the base shoe is the most important part of it because if obviously the eyes of Spider-Man pop out. If you look at it, it says Spider-Man, so it's pretty, pretty self-explanatory, but it's probably one of my more favorite pairs that I've done in a while. This is the Atmos Jordan 5, the collaboration I did with JBF Customs. Um, obviously, he is the, uh, the skins guy. Everyone knows that he skins everything. Um, and we always want to do something together. And obviously, it was like, you know, I paint, he sews. But let's not do something that's really forced. But this was what I uh, sourced. You know, Jake did all the, all the Python. And actually, Absolute, who does the lasering, I'm sure you've seen a lot of his work. He lasers the jump man. There's actually 3M recess underneath here. You know, so just little details, like it's not just throwing skin on it. Staying in the same vein of the skin, this is actually the first ever skin collaboration I had done. Um, obviously this is the, what the Kobe ate, but I had the real skins, and these things have um, real purple python, um, lizard, um, this is shark, this is yellow lizard, this is um, stingray, and then we had the faux cheetah on the inside. We really just wanted to get, you know, the animals that were on, you know, whatever. I mean, I, again, had my guy absolute laser, the what the Kobe. Now as the season unfolds, be on the lookout for more custom creations by Mosh and other customizers on court. In the meantime, let's check out what you guys have been wearing in my fave five of your kicks on court. Rossi Ish laced up the China edition of the Nike Hyperdunk. URBX 23 wore the Chicago Air Jordan 10. Oakley 19 rocked the Overtown colorway of the Lee Ming Way of Way 2, and WEGS Beats sported the Ginger Air Jordan 16. Coming in at number one is Turtle Tie Dye 24, who brought out the Kobe one for the Mamba's return. Well, as always, tune in each and every Friday for your Kicks on Court news here. Also, don't forget to place your descriptions on what a Paul George signature shoe would embody in the comments section below. I'm your host, George Kill, and before we close, check out our Heat highlight of the week. Amir Johnson completely stuffs Kawhi Leonard at the rim in his Oreo Air Jordan 5. Guard at 6'8. Kawhi Leonard goes 